in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah the Almighty be upon all of you. I am Umar bin Abid and you are watching Umar Linguistics. So dear viewers, in this lecture we are going to solve uh, the study questions from chapter 7 grammar from the study of language by George Yule. And I'll solve and explain the questions from 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th edition. And you know uh, you can have all these answers from the st study guide as well. Uh, but the purpose of this video is not just to uh, give you the answers which are already available in the study guide but also to explain them as well. So actually this channel is bilingual so I have made the same video in English as uh, in Urdu as well and I have given the link in the description below but this video is in English and I'll speak only in English throughout this video so those speakers who c cannot understand Urdu so they can watch uh, this video alright so let's start the first question identify all the parts of speech used in this sentence for example woman is equal to noun so the woman kept a large snake in a cage but it escaped recently so it's very simple the is the article then a woman is the noun and especially common noun then this kept is verb a is once again article large is adjective snake is once again noun common noun in is preposition a once again article cage noun but conjunction it is actually a pronoun escaped verb and recently adverb so it's a very easy question question 2 how many adverbs are there in the following sentence really large objects move very slowly so actually there are three adverbs first of all in the beginning really one and then very and the third one slowly so these are the three adverbs in this sentence question three what is the tense and voice of the verb in the following sentence my parents were married in rome so we have to tell the tense and voice of the verb so my parents were married in the in rome so actually it was the tense is past it is past tense and the voice because there is the were married the third form just after the were so actually the voice is of this sentence is passive question 4 what is the difference between grammatical gender and natural gender once again it's very easy so you know grammatical gender is based on the type of noun such as masculine feminine or neuter and it is not tied to sex for example uh, even table has neuter gender and even in some languages like urdu or arabic table can uh, table is actually if i talk about urdu so, so table is masculine in many languages there are only two genders so even in these languages even non-living be beings I, uh, uh, would be I, uh, masculine or feminine for example if I talk about pencil so in a pencil in Urdu is feminine alright book in Urdu is feminine but book in Arabic is masculine this is grammatical gender what is natural gender natural gender which is actually biological gender and it is fixed either you are arabic male or either you are uh, you are english male so natural gender is based on sex as a biological distinction between male and female and neither ma uh, and neither male nor female so actually it is just a 
नेचुरल जेंडर इज जस्ट अ बायोलॉजिकल डिस्टिंक्शन विच इज बेस्ड ऑन सेक्स ऑल राइट देन वी हैव क्वेश्चन फाइव हाउ डज स्पेनिश डिफर फ्रॉम जर्मन इन द नंबर ऑफ ग्रामेटिकल जेंडर्स सो एक्चुअली इन स्पेनिश वी हैव जस्ट टू जेंडर्स एज आई वॉज टॉकिंग दैट देर आर मैनी लैंग्वेजेस विच हैव ओनली टू जेंडर सो स्पेनिश इज़ वन ऑफ दैम विच हैव ओनली टू जेंडर्स वाई जर्मन वाई जर्मन हैज फ्री जेंडर मैस्किल इन फेमिन एंड न्यूटर जस्ट लाइक इंग्लिश इन इंग्लिश वी ऑल्सो हैव फ्री जेंडर्स नाउ यू माइट बी थिंकिंग अबाउट Uh, the current issues current burning issues uh, where uh, there are some transgenders as well and uh, some gay men or uh, lesbian women so what are their genders so in many languages even uh, for them there are some separate genders uh, or sometimes they consider in both so actually uh, this is the issue of usually language and gender and we usually study such concepts and uh, such relations of powers and how uh, they can contribute or they can uh, get their rights however these are some political issues sometimes as well all right but usually we study uh, in when we study grammar so because we are just studying grammar we are not focusing on these issues so usually we study in this way question 6 what prescriptive rules for the proper use of english are not obeyed in the following sentences and how would they be corrected so you know what are the prescriptive and descriptive rules i have explained in detailed in these lectures so actually uh, prescribed rules are those when the grammarian say here that you should write like this and you should not write like write like this which are usually based on english grammatical rules are sometimes based on considered to be based on latin so how uh, these two sentences are violating prescriptive rules so if we look at the first tense sentence the old theory consistently failed to fully explain all the data uh, see it seems to be no mistake but uh, according to uh, prescriptive rules there is a mistake and that is to fully explain uh, in prescriptive rules we cannot break an infinitive we have to use verb just after uh, to and we cannot break it or we cannot put an adverb between this so you must not split an infinitive this rule has been Uh, broken here according to prescriptive rules secondly i can't remember the name of the person i gave the book to similarly this sentence is now considered right even this is considered right uh, nowadays and many speakers speak like this but according to prescriptive rules a preposition cannot come at the end of a sentence so therefore the rule which is Uh, broken according to prescriptive grammarians you must not end a sentence with a preposition question 7 how many noun phrases are there in the following sentence although uh, the, uh, the noun phrase the verb phrase such structures are usually uh, will be dealt in syntax in more detail which is actually the next chapter however we have a small introduction in this chapter as well so how many noun phrases are there so first of all the first phrase is robert bought a small puppy second phrase to the party third phrase and we fourth phrase all wanted to keep it it is the fifth phrase so there are five phrases so Uh, if you don't know about this so you um, need to watch uh, the lectures on this chapter which i have already uh, made and uh, then you will understand this properly however those students who have already learned this chapter so it's a very you can say it's just like a cake for them it's very easy all right and that uh, it refers to puppy then uh we refers to persons or similar like that 
क्वेश्चन एट वट वॉज रॉन्ग विद दी ओल्डर लैटिन इन्फ्लुएंस डेफिनेशन ऑफ इंग्लिश प्रोनाउंस सो बेस्ड ऑन लैटिन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ इंग्लिश प्रोनाउंस वॉज कंसिडर टू बी रॉन्ग एंड वट वॉज द प्रॉब्लम फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन ओल्डर डेफिनेशन प्रोनाउंस वर डिस्क्राइब्ड एज वर्ड्स यूज इन प्लेस ऑफ नाउंस दिस वॉज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्रोनाउंस बेस्ड ऑन लैटिन इन्फ्लुएंसड that words used in place of noun this was the definition of pronoun but if this is is the correct then we could use he instead of man and we could use it instead of sandwich in the following sentence so if we have this sentence the man at the sandwich so if we want to replace man with this word he pronoun so then we have to say like the he at the it and uh, to replace sandwich we have to use it because uh, it's a you know uh, it's a non human thing so if we just talk about or if we just say that pronouns are words used in place of nouns so man is a noun and if we use he the sentence is considered to be wrong and if we use uh, Uh, it instead of sandwich so it will become like the he at the it the he at the it so it will be uh, very odd and it will be considered wrong so therefore uh, the correct definition is uh, say uh, because instead of he we have to replace the uh, the complete the man with just the word he and we have to uh, replace this whole at it with the sandwich so actually we have to sometimes it means sometimes we do not have to replace only one word but we have to replace a group of words so therefore uh, the better definition would be pronouns as words used in place of noun phrases now phrases can be longer so when we talk when we consider and when we include phrases the word of phrases in the sentence so all these uh, the definition will be perfectly correct and it will be applied to any of the sentence question 9 what is the grammatical function of the proper noun in the following sentence so what is the grammatical function of the proper noun in the following sentence the professor and her student visited berlin during the summer so what we do we mean by grammatical function here here we uh, mean as we o subject verb ob object so what is the proper noun so here there is only one proper noun berlin so what what the uh, what is the function of berlin here the professor and her students visited berlin during the summer so uh, if we look at it we can make this sentence as passive ones we can say that berlin was visited by the professor and her students so actually berlin, berlin is acting as an object in this sentence so it is the this is the grammatical function of the proper noun in this sentence question 10 what is the most common word order in the language of the world verb initial verb medial uh, or verb final so what we have to uh, what we have to tell in this question that which is the most common word order in the language languages of the world in most of the languages of the world i uh, does in most of the languages of the world verb comes initially or verbs come in the middle position or verbs comes at the final we know in english verbs come at the uh, in between the at uh, at medial position but interestingly in most of the languages of the world the verb final is considered to be more common verb is con uh, in most of the languages of the world verb is at verb comes at the final position unlike english i am just going to show you a table as well uh, so you know uh, in this book the study of language by george ulls uh, seventh edition he has mentioned clearly Uh, the most common pattern is actually subject object verb and we can see it in japanese so in japanese uh, this is the sentence order sov 
but in english we have svo and in many other languages verb comes at the final position question 11 is malagasy which is spoken in actually madagascar a vso language or something else so actually it's vos language in this language so there are many languages in which verb also comes at the beginning as well and one example is malagasy we have just seen in that table as well question 12 given these other gallic words transcribe the following sentence into english so these are some uh, gallic words we have to transcribe these in english so bag me bag small boil hit then black man and boy so uh, it means hit then it means an so you know there is no translation of an or there is no an in gallic so therefore we have to put some words on our own when we trans uh, translate one language to another so if the first ten sentence will be the small boy hit the black dog so the has been added by our own uh, by ourself and uh, uh, you know uh, the small boy hit the black dog then small this was here so it was actually you can say uh, it is a disorder sentence and we have to we have corrected it in the right manner so an is two times so actually they have not given the uh, you can say translation of an actually uh, i was wrong actually in gaelic there are an but this an in english would be uh, trans would be translated as the the small boy hit the black dog because in english you know we cannot we cannot put an when the incoming word is not starting with a vowel second sentence the dog saw the big man once again the same position so we can see that in gaelic an can comes even an can comes even before those words which are not starting with a vowel sound all right so it was the difference so therefore an is will be translated as the because it is against the rules of english that an could come before a word which is not starting from a vowel sound all right so these are the references the study of language 7th edition and the and the study guide of the study of language 7th edition so i hope you have understood it don't forget to give your feedback remember in your prayers jazakallah khairan and thank you